Okay, so to carry on with blocks, we're going to look at some of the, the uh, another way of describing them as the liner style. First one we're going to look at is a, called a parent bore block. Parent bore block means that the, the line, there is no liner. The cylinder is integral with the block. Uh, it is simply uh, cast into shape, uh, a rough shape, and then the, uh, it is machined out to the diameter of the desired for the, each piston. Um, the advantage of this style is that they are very cheap to produce and we don't have to worry about uh, as much of, of leaking seals in the liners and, and setup of, of meeting all of that liner cr criteria which we're going to get into. Um, one of the newer styles on this or newer designs on this is uh, PTWA which is, stands for Plasma Transfer Wire Arc. Um, what they claim is that with this, uh, a parent board block can be essentially built up using plasma wire transfer arc, or plasma transfer wire arc, I should say, uh, and, and, and building up that cylinder wall to then machine it and reuse it again. Um, this technology is used in, some of you may be familiar with that with your snowmobiles, where they have an aluminum block and in order, to, and they simply use this, this principle and, and put a steel coating on the inside so that they, you, uh, your cylinders last a little longer. Um, by far the most common and, and, and design out there is a wet liner. A wet liner is a very thick wall, and I have a couple here, and we'll look at them a little closer. Um, this is a very thick, very heavy wall. Um, the thickness of this wall extends the, the entire length of this liner. Um, it doesn't, isn't reduced at all. And the main design of that is that it, we need that thickness because that has to withstand the cylinder pressure. It is also the best for heat transfer. Because we have my, my combustion happening in the cylinder right here, we have conduction of that heat away and then into the coolant which is in direct contact with this liner wall. So we have conduction through the thickness of the metal and convection away with the uh, use of, of coolant. All right. Um, the, another style is called a dry liner. Um, they are much lighter, much thinner. All right. Um, what we, we, can, we do with these is we, we simply put them in and there is a uh, minimum contact or even referred to as a loose fit. A loose fit, and please remember that this is four decimal points, so a loose fit dry liner is 15 ten thousandths of an inch difference between the outside of the liner and the inside of the bore and the block. That means it should fit in fairly easily and, and, and without having to be pressed in or beat in with a hammer. Um, but the, the downside on this st style is that when the engine starts, the principle is that when we heat it up it will expand. So in the first few uh, strokes of that engine, when we're, we're getting a, the, the cylinder combustion to happen, it heats up this liner and it expands outward to make contact with the, the block. Uh, now, the um, advantage of this style is that we don't have to worry about uh, coolant leaking into the, the oil gallery or into the oil pan uh, if a seal fails because there's, it's still trapped in, in the block itself. Um, the last one we have down here is, is a combination of wet, I guess I'm gonna, what? a wet dry liner. The wet dry liner is very similar to this, but this is actually not a true wet dry liner, and we'll, we'll describe it. But a wet dry liner is, is, has a thick portion on the top where the combustion is going to happen and then on the lower section because there's no combustion forcing out on that they simply don't um, they, they don't beef it up and make it as thick so it sits uh, it, it's it's very uh, very thin and we, we, we um, are able to use uh, less material which makes it a little lighter and a little cheaper to produce so we're going to carry on with a little bit more information about on liners. 
Um, I've drawn out a couple of pictures here on the board and I want to cover first uh, and just describe them a little differently. I'll hold them up and you can see them but maybe the the picture might actually tell you more because of, of, of you can see it in, in, in two-dimensional. So in the typical wet liner this is what we're looking at right here. All right. Um, with this liner, as we said earlier, this side of the liner is going to be in direct contact with my coolant. That coolant is going to be able to flow all the way around the liner and thus be able to do a really good job on removing the heat. We have our uh, multiple O-rings and flat seals, square rings, all different types. Uh, at the bottom and that provides a seal on the, in the bottom and between uh, contact between the liner and the block. On the top of this um, we don't have any o-ring in here at the top but what we would use is uh, built into the head gasket uh, that goes over the top of this liner would provide a seal on the top s section. Um, this is the other one that we were looking at here is a mid-stop wet liner. Now it, it's it's you can see that it's got, got a very thinner I uh, got a thinner um, surface on the bottom half of this. But what we we're doing is moving this um, flange from the from the top here down to here. So when you are, are measuring um, the the depth or trying to calculate the protrusion on a mid-stop liner, it would be from this dimension from here to here and then measuring that distance in the block uh, at, to corresponding. On a typical liner, we look at this dimension is the liner and this component here is simply going to be our flange. All right, so our flange thickness here And over here, when we're looking at this, it would be here. There, there. Quite a bit of difference, all right? Now, the way that a liner works, all right? If you look at this, the black section here is going to be my block. All right, this is all cast. All right, we have a, a gallery that would go all the way around the liner and, and be in direct contact with the liner. The flange, and I've drawn a typical one here, the flange will typically extend above here. When it does extend above, we refer to that as protrusion. But there are some cases where the, the flange actually is below the top surface of the deck and that is referred to as recession. Alright, um, I will mention it, uh, in, in, uh, it when we look at this. Um, some engine manufacturers when you're looking at uh, this, instead of referring to it as a recession, actually refer to it as a negative protrusion. So, it's just a, a, a way of, of, of classifying it. Instead of protrusion, they go negative protrusion. So, I mean, it's just a, kind of a messed up way of, of referring to it. Um, at the bottom of my, my liner, you'll see I've made two galleries here to, to represent two O-rings on the bottom. That is below the coolant level and it is designed to seal between the block and the liner at that place, all right? And as I said earlier, the head gasket would be located up at the top and be crushed down and that provides a seal to keep coolant from leaking out and into the top of the cylinder. We're going to look uh, now at, at liner protrusion uh, and, and measurements and specs when we're setting up a, a liner in a block. Um, in a, a, and again, I've drawn, only drawn out four cylinders here, but in any, any engine, you will look at your spec and it will give you usually a range on what your protrusion should be. Uh, I've set this one up and said that it's somewhere between two and six thou is my maximum uh, uh, protrusion spec. All right, so I've also gone in and, and drawn out four numbers on this so that we, we can see how this is going to work. 
Um, the mac and that's very fine, but when you are measuring these protrusions, um, you should measure it on each cylinder in four positions. And for each cylinder, the maximum difference from any of these four uh, measurements should only be one thou. Now that's kind of a guideline. You do need to go in and look at your specifications um, and, and see what they will allow in case it is more or less. Um, what something if you have more of a measurement like if you can think that if this is two thou uh, difference from one side to the other it simply is meaning that my liner is sitting uh, not square in the block or not flat down along the counter bore all right um, and, and, and that needs to be checked as well um, I say this all the time but you need to write this down right I've only got four cylinders here and that's 16 measurements to remember there's no way you're going to remember what the, the third measurement was on your second cylinder when you get down to the last one here so write everything down on a piece of paper draw it out so you can identify which one is is going to need to be changed and we'll come back to here and, and show you the same thing when we are measuring the protrusion uh, a handy tool is a dial indicator uh, mounted on a, a sled gauge which is just a, a machine block that's going to run along your surface and you can run from here and up onto, onto your block onto your liner and you will be able to see what the, what the difference is. Now I've gone ahead and drawn out some, uh, some numbers on these, made some uh, uh, fictitious readings. Um, we, we said two to six is my max. So if you look at every one of these measurements, they are all within that range. But the other major thing you have to look at at your specification is the maximum adjacent difference. That means that two liners that are adjacent to one, on, one another can't have a, a difference of more than two thousandths of an inch. These are all right, these are okay, but, but this one is three thou difference from here. You can see on here it looks like I've got an inch in between but when you look at the proximity of this liner flange to this liner flange in an engine you may only have a half an inch. What they want to get away from is when we install the, the cylinder head over the top of this and bolt it down that there isn't uh, uh, too much of a gap. We can't get the, the cylinder head to bend down and hold it down on this one that's going to be lower than this one that's going to be higher by that much. So we, that's why we need to do this. So the way we would uh, look at this, at fixing this, then I'm just going to get rid of this line, is we would need to raise this, right? This one's okay, right? We're within 2,000 and we're within spec. These two are, are within spec and they're okay. But this one and this one are out of, out of range. So what I would simply do is remove this liner and let's say we add a 2,000 shim. Alright, so now when I install it, and again that shim is going to go between my flange and my block. And that's going to bring my measurement up to 4,000. Right, and you're thinking, well why not just use 1,000? Okay, so now we have these are exactly the same height. This is only one thou, right, difference, and this is, is, is two thou. Now this is still within range, so I, I don't need to do anything with it. And, and by just making one change in, in the, with a shim, I've corrected my, my problem. Okay, so we talked uh, when we were discussing blocks uh, that a parent board block was much cheaper to produce. When we look at a liner style engine, uh, it has some advantages, but it, it, one of the disadvantages is that it does require a lot more uh, work go into it when it is being uh, produced or when it is being rebuilt. All right. Um, so if you look at this kind of uh, thing, we're going to go through a couple of the, the measurements we need to make. Uh, one of the things that makes it really difficult uh, to, to put a, a liner engine together is that it must, the liner must be sized to the block. All right? So when we are, are checking a block or we're checking a liner, we have to know what we are measuring. All right? There are a whole bunch of things. So we, 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 we look at 
uh, one thing is um, protrusion. All right, protrusion we said is how much this liner is going to extend above the block. But we can do some measurements and calculate that out. First thing we would do is measure from the top of the, of the block to the bottom, and we can use a depth micrometer to, to, to do that, and take a measurement of this. All right, we could then use the micrometer and measure from here to here can calculate what the, the thickness of the flange is and then it's just simple math uh, problem right if this is like uh, uh, keep it nice and simple 750 thousandths of an inch and that this is uh, 753 thou I can tell you that when I install this liner into this bore that it's going to protrude by three thou uh, if that is is in my acceptable range I know that and I, I can I can ad, um, let it go if it's uh, a, a little uh, too short I can add a f calculate w what kind of a shim I would need to bring in here to bring it up into uh, an acceptable position all right so that is one thing we would have to measure the other thing when we look at the block is this basic shape we have to look at on a liner how many different places does that liner actually fit to the block and on this it actually fits here and it fits here and it fits at the bottom so you have to take that into consideration and measure it at these all these three points so by measuring my liner from here to here and then comparing that to this it's going to tell me whether it's going to fit or not. Same at here to here. There's where the, it's going to be supported. Are these the same? And the last one is down near the bottom, maybe where the O-rings are, are, are going to ride against. Is it going to fit? When we look at this, and this is only one liner, we talk about these sizing these to, uh, to the, the cylinder block, and we've got to look at it like this. I would record all of those measurements for each bore in the block. And then, right, there's my six cylinders. I'm, I've measured them all and I have all the measurements. Now I take my six liners. Right, and I measure all of my liners. And I kind of give them a grading system, all right? So this one is, let's say this one is plus one thou over, and this one is minus two, and this one is plus uh, uh, three and uh, zero. This one's perfect, and this one is a one, and this one is a one. Well, then I look at my liners, right? Because what I want to have happen is that when I put my liner into a, 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 a bore, that it fits very close all right and I don't want to just go uh, uh, in random order and grab one and put it in let's say this one right want to do a plus is plus three and this one is uh, minus one minus uh, two or no plus two uh, zero uh, zero and one. All right. Now they're not always going to be exactly the same, but I know that this one is going to fit into this cylinder the best. And if I took this one and tried to put it into this one, sorry, it was a minus two. All right. This one is going to fit in here. This one will fit in here. This one will fit in here. This one will fit in here. And this one. Is going to fit in there. We can mix them up and, and do that. That way then I don't end up trying to drive a plus three into a minus two hole. That's five thou difference. There's no way it's going to go. And then you're end up going to have to take them all back out and shuffle them around again. Always measure beforehand and that way then you know it's going to fit. Uh, 
we can make adjustments to it for height using shims or and, and by correcting the counter bore. Alright, another uh, thing to can keep into consideration when we're looking at uh, blocks and liners is the counter bore. The counter bore is the step down from the, from the top of the, the block to where the liner is actually going to sit on. And I've, I've used one with an, an example of a top flange, but if we had a mid-stop liner, that would simply be down here and you still have to inspect it. When we are inspecting it, we want to make sure that there uh, is no wear. All right. If we have wear, if and again, you can tell this by it, it, does it have maybe where one side is is starting to build up rust, and on the other side, it's it's really polished and shiny. That is meaning that 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 liner is rubbing on here. And which is going to create an, ev uh, 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 an uneven uh, flange for the liner to sit on. So that is going to also be evident by taking your measurement of that flange, and we talked about that in four different places. Um, the next thing would be just the buildup of rust. If there's rust or scale in there uh, from maybe a uh, uh, coolant has got through here and we've got a little bit of air working together and we, we have a buildup of rust. Well, uh, metal in here, that cast iron, will rust very quickly and will ex as, as it rusts it will expand which is going to build up and again force your, your liner not to sit square and to rise up in, in the bore a little bit. So we have to check that the, it's the correct distance. Um, we also want to check that it is the correct shape. All right. Um, most of these we end up where I'm going to redraw this out here, where we have a square shape, and a square, and we're talking about from the the drop down to where the the liner sits. In some cases, you will have a little bit of a chamfer on the end. All right, and you must. Um, pay attention to that because that chamfer usually is present in the liner as well. That chamfer is to allow for this, this radius uh, edge to sit without hitting. Um, if there is a problem with your counter bore, it can be remachined. All right, and it's, it's actually a fairly simple process and we simply uh, bolt the adapter onto the top and we, we, we just turn it by hand and we, we grind off a little bit of material until it is um, true all the way around. Now whatever we've removed from here, if I'm going to reuse the liner, I'm going to have to add in a shim equal to the amount that I have removed in order to keep everything equal. Or if I'm installing new liners, measure my flange thickness and adjust the shim to make sure that I have the correct protrusion. Um, if you machine it and you fail to re uh, re redo that chamfer on the bottom, when we install the liner, and we clamp it down, what typically we will find is that because we're, 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 when we're pushing down on that liner, we're focusing all that stress on one point, the top flange of the liner will crack off. Uh, the worst part about that is, that, I mean, you're probably not going to hear it crack while you're putting the head bolts on or around the top, and then when you go to start your engine up, the bottom half of the liner will slide away with the uh, piston on the way down and you'll be in trouble. 